Impact Lounge is the number one YouTube channel for fans of Impact Wrestling. The Fresh Prince of Midair, Trey Miguel. Too sick for this world, Zachary Wentz. And the Cardiac Kid, Desmond Xavier. And we are the, the Rascals. Rascals. And you are listening to Total Nonstop Impact Podcast, baby. Woo! Welcome back, everybody, to Total Nonstop Impact, Impact Talk for Impact fans, featured right here on the Impact Lounge. This is Trent, along with my co-host, which is not Kyle today. It is none other than J-Bone. J-Bone, say hello to the crowd. What is up, everyone? Good to be here. I hope you don't mind being in the lounge. I uh, I, w- I wore my bathrobe. Well, it's a good thing we're not doing video. Even though uh, Kyle wanted us to do video, <laughs> nobody knows you're, you have a bathrobe on until unless they can, they're just imagining it right now. Now they know you have a bathroom. <laughs> it's 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 uh, it's not that sexy. So yeah, we'll 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 stick to audio. For uh for context sake, J Bone, what's what color is this bathroom? Let's just just give them the full visual since we already mentioned it. It's 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 actually uh, a, a snuggie donated from uh, <laughs> the mayor of Slamtown Zebra Print. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome. <laughs> There you go, guys. He's in a snuggie. Jay, picture that, guys. If you don't now, if you need a full visual, you can go to his Twitter. Why don't you plug your Twitter there, J Bone? Uh, J Bone fifty one fifty on Twitter. Also at Smash This Podcast. Uh, been doing that for five years. Uh, nice. Part of a couple different websites. I do uh, MLW and a couple other uh, items for wrestlingwithwrestling.com. dot com as well as uh, my impact reviews for Wrestle Addict Radio on uh, iTunes and Anchor FM, the audio version of it. Other than that, I'm on YouTube. There you go, guys. Look it up. J-A-Y-B-O-N-E. Take a look. So, J-Bone, for those who – I wanted to get those plugs in so they can look you up real quick while we're going on on the show here. But for those who don't know, why don't you give us a little background on – on uh, you know, what what brought you to Impact, what makes you an Impact fan, you know, just kind of connect it to – Connect your fandom to Impact. Now, you, you mentioned your shows, the pods you do, but connect it to Impact a little bit. What do you? What's your? Um, how long have you been a fan of Impact Wrestling? I've I've been a fan on and off since the one cent pay per view. I mean, they've done some tremendous things over the years. The company has completely been flipped on its head within the last two years. Yeah, which I think is bringing a whole new fan base, including me, back to the fold because. You know, they they went through a lot of stuff, bad management, bad booking, whatever, you know, sure. d- different opinions here and there. And I feel like Impact Wrestling has seriously been the most uh, consistent company booking wrestling storyline wise over the last two years since this, like, you know, rebirth of the company and new ownership and new yeah. uh, execs in the office got the more and uh don callis they've been killing it you know yeah i think you use the word their consistency i'm i'm that's a big one i've been using too man i think this uh this regime has shown really good consistency for the first time in a long time and i think uh that's huge for what a lot of things people bitched about with impact was no consistency and we've had that since this new regime so i'm i'm happy with that too man yeah, that's, and I that's think really cool. I, th- I think the locker room's happy too. That's a huge part of it. How many yeah. times did we hear over the years? Oh, the locker room is unhappy. That speaks volumes. True. Then again, I will say, uh, I think wrestling locker rooms are always going to have a couple of unhappy people because <laughs> they're not getting the push they want or whatever. Oh, nothing's yeah. <laughs> perfect, but just yeah. you know, j- just in general, if like sure. if you don't feel like the company is doing well, people aren't going to be as you know vibing that great and. Absolutely. It, they're touring consistently over the last year and a, between year and a half to two years, which is something they couldn't even do when Kurt Angle was in the company for crying out loud. The people sure. are buying tickets to see this brand. That's unprecedented in the history of this company. I uh I was just at the Windsor tapings. I was telling you off air that we were 
drove up for the Windsor tapings, which is going to be the TV taped all the way to stretch up to um, Rebellion. Nice. So, uh, no spoilers. This is a spoiler-free zone. I have an ethical code against spoilers. Oh, so same none here. Of, none of that, but uh, it's great stuff. I can tell you guys that. And yeah, man, two nights, you know, a thousand people each night sold out. And um, th- they were sold on nights. I was able to get in, do some, you know, what's because of some folks I know. But it was a, those, that was, those were max capacity arenas, man, both nights. So that was really cool to see um, see the company really getting that that buzz. I was watching some old clips last night as they show like certain old events that are that took place at bigger venues and stuff. And yeah. I mean, they, they did have some, there was a time, man, like I think right before 2009, when that shift happened, our two, like right before the Hogan and Bischoff era, there was like, man, there was such a great momentum about to happen during yeah. that that era too. There was some really cool stuff happening, but uh, they did have some big big drawing arenas at the time too. But man, after that fell off, it was just we 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 were very up and down. But man, consistency has been great. I can tell, like I said, I can tell you, it's been great uh, coming off these tapings too. So. It is. Definitely. It's just. It's yeah. just. A, like I said, it's consistent. The roster is great. They've, there's a whole. You know, it's not. Oh, who can we pick up that's on their last leg to help fill a right. spot in the roster? Yep. No, they're they're in this youth movement now. That like you know, Josh Matthews says, and um, it's tremendous. It's like around the corner every turn, you got someone new, hot and fresh coming in. You know, Ace yep. Austin, Jordan Grace. Brian Cage is on fire. I think the oldest one on the roster right now could have, could possibly be the champ for crying out loud. Yeah, and he's like and, 38. <laughs> and he's completely rejuvenated himself over the course of the last five years. Yeah, no it's question about it. No question about it, man. That's cool. It's really cool, man. I, I, I love it. And, you know, I was talking to somebody on the drive up to Windsor. I was saying, like, in reality, uh, they're really it really is a whole new company. Like it's not, it, it is just impact. Like there really isn't any link to TNA other than the title lineage and the videotape library, which like they basically, the lineage is TNA, but man, the current company is completely different from TNA. It, it is just a new company altogether. 100%. It, is. it is. I mean, there's a lot of good stuff from the, from the history books from, oh, yeah. from TNA and stuff. A lot of proud moments. A lot of great people came and, and went, you know, and it's, and you can find it all on the GWN network for That's true. seven bucks or whatever it is. I, I, I've got it. <laughs> I don't use it as much as I should, but I know there's some good stuff in there. Um, yeah. In fact, I was even thinking of, I was like, man, when's the last time we had an against all odds? So I was going to yeah. <laughs> look, look that up in my free time tomorrow and be like, Hey, we could watch a couple old against all odds. I don't know how many there were, but it was one of the older events they had. Yeah, I'm against all odds was one of the first um, branded pay per views they did, and I, like outside of the Wednesday night ones. And, yeah, um, it was cool that they're bringing it back. I like that they they brought it back, and it was. Um, I believe that's against all odds is going to close out the Vegas tapings, right? That's what it looks like. And yeah. um, against all odds always had a gambling theme. You remember that? Like they would always do some kind of gambling theme to the poster. Or like the uh, the artwork around it, so it makes sense. No, it totally makes sense. Yeah, I'm gonna look it up while we're talking here. I'm on the, my GWN and I'm gonna look up against all odds and I'm gonna see what comes up here because um, so I'm showing. Let's see here, 2006, 2008 was 2000. Oh, it's two. There's 2011. Might have been 2011. Might have been the last one. Is what I'm seeing here. Okay. Um, yeah, someone in yeah. my chat in my last video I did. In fact, I was uh, I had Andre Corbeil on with me, and um, we were talking about too. Like, wow, when was the last one we had? Twenty twelve. Twenty twelve. Actually, I'm looking at it right now. Twenty twelve. Okay. Twenty twelve looks like the last against all odds, and it was headlined. I'll tell you right now. Uh, well, that's only one match they had. No, so I didn't have the show listing on the uh, description, which they need to do. GWN. I need you guys to. Get on the put the match list things on all the entries here. That's we're, we're missing out. There but, you go. Uh, no, that's cool, man. Yeah, good old Andre. Huh? Man, talk about a talk about the reporter of all reporters of news, Andre Corbio, man. He's that a guy, cla- he's a classy fun guy. He, I swear, my uh, news will break, and Andre will have a video edited and ready on my news feed 
within like within the the minute. <laughs> I'm like, this guy's something else. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's, cool, he, he, in fact, he was one of the ones that inspired me uh, six, oh, no, between five and six years ago to like start yeah. what I was doing because I loved what he was doing with um, the Can-Am connection with Big Ray. There's a, right. there's a blast from the past. Big time. I, I First time I heard Andre was, I think, on the Vince Russo podcast, but the early Russo on the, uh, when he had Pyro and Ballyhoo. I believe that's where I first heard Andre. Oh, that was a few that. years ago. Okay, yeah, years, yeah, a little while back. And that's why I first heard of him, and then um, and I'm like, this guy, is, this guy's something else. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, but cool, man. All right, listen. So that's a good little intro here. We got a little little chatter, a little ten minute intro. Uh, but yeah, guys, we are here to break down the March twenty second, twenty nineteen episode of Impact Wrestling live from Las Vegas, Nevada, the Samstown Casino, where they've um had an extended stay the last uh, the last stretch, which is going to culminate against all odds next week. So we're gonna go through the matches, kind of get the uh, you know, same same thing Kyle and I do, just kind of talk show format this, give our opinion, see where the company's going. Again, now J Bone, I just saw the Windsor taping, so I know some results because of what they had to tape. But I'm right. gonna try to not let that bias me when we talk here, because I'm I gotta keep my head clear, man. I got I can't I gotta shake it off because I know where certain <laughs> things went. I hear you. Advantage, you know. <laughs> but but uh, but I I like I said I hate spoilers and I won't be I won't be saying anything. You guys cannot torture me enough to spoil anything out of this goddamn show today so <laughs> oh i don't i don't even look them up the second they hit online i know so yeah. many people do it's like everybody wants their stuff five minutes ago i don't get it i even i was at the tapings i instagrammed a photo like you know from the impact tapings or whatever then i realized i'm like wait a minute this fucking photo gives away something that happens. I took it down immediately. I was like, oh, oh shit. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's it, one thing to be like you know do it like an empty ring shot of the crowd that's one thing but yeah yeah, I was like, I can't, I can't put something up that's gonna give away something that's gonna happen. Oh. Holy shit! Oh. I, I didn't realize. It. I'm just taking a picture. It was like, you know, Lucha Brothers are in the ring and and the LAX in the ring. I, I'm not, that's all I'm saying. But yeah. it's, it was like, I was like, oh shit, this this I can't give anything away. <laughs> so I took it down like two <laughs> seconds later. So um, nice. all right, guys. So Mar- March 22nd episode, uh, we got the little recap. We got the previously kind of shows the Johnny heel turn. Uh, that was nuts, by the way, J Bone. What do you think about that, real quick? Oh, well, dude, it's it's been a long time coming. Yeah, no know? question, no question. It's the fact, I mean, ever since he came in the company, when there was some unrest with AAA or whatever that whole thing he had with Taya, and then uh, he was in the the faction with Killer Cross down there, which I was like, okay, they need to bring that up north here. Oh, so wait, so I don't really watch AAA, so that's a thing from AAA then. That so, was, yeah. Oh, I yeah. gotcha. Okay. <laughs> Johnny, um, I don't know what the hell they called him down there, but. Johnny... <laughs> was it Mundo? No, not Mundo, right? Oh, oh it was, called... yeah. I think I think he kept the same name as Lucha Underground. So Johnny Mundo, yeah. So he, I think, at least I think he was. But he had all the belts down there. He carried like, like three or four belts with him. Uh, Killer Cross helped him. Cross was his muscle. Oh. And Cross just destroyed everyone in Johnny's path. Gotcha. And I was like, I'm like, we need that up here. So the second Cross hit Impact Wrestling, I I lost you cuss on here. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> I, I lost my shit, dude. I I, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yes, okay. So we have the potential of having this happen, and it looks like we're finally getting this. No kidding. By the way, if you've heard this show, there's more than cussing. God damn it. That lo- <laughs> <laughs> there's you ne- never ask that again. <laughs> you can just go right into it. I just uh, want to make, I just, you know, any place I guess I want to make sure, because I don't do a lot on my own show. I try to keep it PG because I'm trying to get my channel monetized again, but uh, yeah. yeah. Somehow they, they're, they're they're continuing to monetize us, even though we we're we're terrible people, <laughs> clearly. But nice. but but um, but no, you'll get there. But anyway, listen. So let's let's start this off, man. Let's let's take it. So that's good to know. I didn't know that. Thank you for informing me because I don't get to. I don't really watch much else, to be honest with you. I'm an odd wrestling fan. I I really I work for AW, so clearly I watch that, and I and I'm yeah. an Impact fan, so I watch Impact. I don't watch anything else really. I keep tabs enough but i don't really have time i'm a busy guy so i don't really have time so facts like that are very welcome to me so keep them coming (laughs) will do if i can find them (laughs) cool man all right so we opened up uh j bone we had moose taking on trey this you know obviously falls out of the um that backstage segment where they 
basically were, <laughs> they had ripped on Moose the week before, and then Moose got his revenge. He was in the smoke room with them, and he beat the shit out of all of them. So basically, it's going to be Moose going through all the uh, the rascals. It looks like. But uh, good match, man. A lot of power moves, I noticed. You know, it was... Um, oh, Moose, Moose really killed Trey. I felt so yeah. bad for him. He tried so hard to, like, you know, throw his hot offense on. Moose is, like, what, three times his size? It's, like, it's, it's damn near impossible. It's nuts. But it, I, mean, it, I like that they, they really played up the size dynamic a lot. Oh, the com- yeah. Commentary, the match, like, you know, Trey was, like... I mean, he looks tiny in front of Moose, so it was, like... Holy shit, you know, so they really played that into that, but um and they played the underdog angle a lot. Like Josh and Don were really like, Oh, he's the underdog, you know, he's struggling, he's he's trying, he's trying, but uh, you know, Moose ended up taking the win on this one. He hit he hit the big spear yeah. and uh you know, trade in Santa chance on that one. So that was um that was good though. I mean it's like, dude, I, I think you gotta keep Moose strong right now. Uh it sucks that it's at the expense of the rascals, but it kind of makes sense in this case. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, the, the Rascals are hot right now. Everybody wants to see them. So wherever you throw them in, people are going to watch. And I honestly think, you know, Moose is a star. I yeah. think I think he's doing better now, honestly, than he was when he faced Aries. 100%. Because I mean, a, a year ago, right? Just yeah, a year ago. Not even. Pretty much. He, he He's just his whole, this whole new heel dimension of moose is you know comical sassy dangerous um it's unpredictable which is great because before it was just not cutting a lot of promos yay we're cheering for you we like moose and now he's just crapping on everyone and it's oh yeah he's doing a lot better he's really coming into his own you're right i think i remember when he lost to aries last year Everybody was so pissed. I, I mean, I I knew Moose was pissed too on a personal level. I knew he was not happy about it yeah. uh, because it was like everything was everything was lined up for him to take that belt, and uh, it didn't work out. But I look back and I go, it was the greatest thing to happen in his career. Look at the levels and the dimensions he got out of t- that heel turn. It yeah. was unbelievable. Like yeah. the guy, is a, he's a bona fide heel now. I love it. I'm like this dude. He gained in 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 losing for the, for the title. He gained character completely, and unbelievable. I think it, it was the best thing. Sometimes, I mean, it's almost like you got to trust the system, right? And like Scott and Don know what they're doing, and that clearly yeah. showed with Moose. Yeah, and the stuff he's done with Killer Cross, them working awesome, you know, off of each other. Cross is so much better than he should be being you know, I don't know how many years he's been in this. Not that many. No, but, but he's, new. he's so good. And if you keep moose with him on and off dude. Mm-hmm. that, that, that power tandem is just ridiculous. Oh, nuts. No, I mean, what, a, what a great dynamic those two have, man. <laughs> they did an interview that, that in ring they did where they're, they're arguing over fashion a couple weeks ago. Do you remember this? Oh and yeah. It's like, don't you ever insult my John Paul Gaultier suit again, or whatever the hell that was, dude? I lost it. I lost my. I lost my shit. Dude, the, sitting... the, the stuff that Moose wears, it's just oh, hilarious. No. That that gold thing with the feathers and the and the dollar, you know, when um the rascals were making fun of him. Mm-hmm. There's that fan that follows Impact everywhere they go. He's always, you know, in the inside of the camera. Yep. He was at ringside this week. He was wearing that thing at ringside of Moose's. Now that's that's my buddy Bill. Actually, <laughs> I saw him I was, this weekend. <laughs> I was like, that is rich. I'm like, that, the only way the Trey Moose thing could have went better this week, could have <laughs> went better, is if Trey wore that thing down to the ring to mock Moose. That's the only <laughs> way this would have been better. You're right. That would have been awesome. That would have been awesome. I but yeah, but I know that guy. That's Bill, and he's he's the number one Impact fan. He's in every, you notice he's in every front row, every taping. <laughs> the guy uh, must have some money to go to every place. That's crazy. He, he's a, he's a cool dude. He's uh, he's like no, it's not even that. He's like, look, man, I got no kids. I got no wife. This is what I spend my money on. I got like a job. Well, this, go. That's what I do. He goes, I that's what this is what I spend my money on, and I love that. I I was like, you know what, man, fucking a, do it, <laughs> absolutely. Where'd I don't blame you. I don't blame you at all, man. 
tremendous. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I saw him this weekend. He had he had two different moose vests. He was rocking this weekend, so <laughs> it was cool. Uh, it was awesome. it was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> now nah, moose moose is looking great. I think coming out of this, moose is right now. I don't see him in title contendership at all. But um, I I can totally see it down the line. I think uh, you keep moose strong enough that. Uh, you know, obviously we're going, you know, Cages Cages is, is, is lining up there. You got Cross in the mix. If Cross does take the belt at some point, I my prediction is hypothetically Cross, you know, Cage takes it, Cross takes it off a of Cage. You can insert Moose immediately into that feud. Like, Moose could be Cross's first opponent, and I think it works out great. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know? because they've been at each other's throats a little bit lately. They've been more together than anything, but there is, like, that little competitive rift there. Yeah, no question. No question about it. I just, it's it's guys like Moose that I wish there was a really good mid-card title that you could put on him to hold him for right now, you know? A, a, um, good, a good mid-card title is the key word. <laughs> uh, you know we've been plagued by this in Impact. This is, the ter- this is just one sore spot. Um, I wish we could get a good one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I feel like the television one could have worked out if they kept it. I don't know why they didn't. I wish they did. You know that 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 red belt was great. It was a beautiful belt. I'm trying to remember who was was it. Devon Dudley was the last person that had that. And he defended it like every week. Yeah, that and that was the point. I was like, man, that's a TV title. Every yeah. week you got one guaranteed title match. That was the point of it. I yeah. think Devon ended it. Maybe Robbie. I can't remember who retired. I'm trying to remember. Um, I saw an Instagram story with Eli Drake today where he took a picture of it. Was, was it the TV title when Eli Drake had that red belt? I'm trying to remember. Or was it something else? Because he's like, he was showing off belts he's won. And um, I was trying to man, what the hell? Was it a TV title when he had it or not? I can't recall. But Or was, um, it, or was it the Grand? No, the Grand. It wasn't the Grand. Was, no, it wasn't the grand. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you right now. I'm gonna I'm gonna pull this up while we're talking here. But uh, but just a just a f- here we go. List of TNA t- TNA. Oh, this is TNA Television Champions. All right, I'm gonna tell you right now. Last champion was Lashley. No shit. Hmm. I didn't know that. Lashley Lash took it off a storm. And that was it, man. So that's uh he was and they deactivated it in 2016 so not that long ago so eli drake did have it that belt that eli drake uh took a picture of today that was that was a tv title so it did have a decent run only about 25 champions not terrible really but hmm. actually i wish they would have stuck with it. it was, i mean it seems like it was so long ago but it's only like three years ago not two like two and a half years ago well yeah and the company's gone through so many changes oh, yeah. And yeah, you know, the, the the roster has you know, like a year and a half ago, the roster was really diminished, and you know barely any tag teams. So it only made sense to like you know, like all right, let's get rid of some titles because we don't have the people to, to to compete for them. Yeah, good point. I didn't think about that. You're right. It's a good point. Yeah, because like, what the hell are you gonna do? You know? <laughs> <laughs> Who are you gonna put them on? <laughs> yeah, good point on that. But uh, all right, yeah. So Moose takes that win over Trey. Um, after that, we kick it back. They do a little OVE promo, hyping up the match between Sammy and Rich. Um, totally compelling story, man. I just want to really quickly say this was a, a program that started off really thin and has become really big, which I love. So I, I appreciate the little recap to kind of show us where it's come in just you know three short months. Oh and yeah. That, you know, yeah, it's a cool I mean, story. This, it, this could have went twenty different directions. I mean, I think people assumed that eventually this was going to go for the X Division Championship, but they made it so they created this whole family big picture around yeah. just the two of them without and, the championship, and that's that's good storytelling, big time. And it's all true, by the way. All oh, that's yeah. factual. All the stuff about Rich's parents. So that's that's deep shit, and it's true. Um, yeah, I was yeah. told uh, one of my buddies is uh, he trains as a referee. His name is Nate Speckman. He's a referee at uh, and in their school at Ohio, the academy they all run out there. And he was saying that uh, Jessica Havoc, who's who's uh, Sammy Callan's significant other, for I think most people know that she yeah. um, she was telling Sam. I guess they were all out there watching and watching the program, or he was rehearsing it or something, and. Uh, she said to him, she's like, 
She's like, you can't say all that stuff. That's like personal shit. <laughs> you know, <I'm> like, <laughs> what are you doing? Apparently it's like, you can't talk like that. <laughs> talk about those things. And he's like, no, it's cool. You know, whatever. And his Sammy voice, I'm justifying it. What are it's, you talking it's, about? It's all TV. It's deep. It's deep. And it also expands on Callahan's character. Huge. Because what's he been known for the last uh, two years with the co- year and a half, two years with the company, just, just, just destroying people. This adds a whole nother layer to him and his crew. Big the sense. whole fa- the whole family aspect. Yeah, he's like, I took care of you. I'm, I'm not a bad guy. Like you know, that's that classic heel. Like I'm not a bad guy. Like to them, they're great guys. Yeah. I'm a good guy. I did right by you. You we're know? we're we're family. We're together. We support each other. What's there's nothing wrong with that. Hey, so we'll see where that one goes, man. But uh, we go from that. <laughs> I mean, that that one's got level. I'll tell you right now. After being the tapings, it's there's levels, man. They there's levels to that game. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, Tessa's in the back with Melissa Santos, and she's demanding that Gail Kim is uh is relieved of her duties and faces legal action after she attacked her last week. And she's demanding an apology. So she's, uh, she wants her to be fired and she wants, but she wants an apology first. So, um, let's see if Tessa gets what she wants. We kick it over to another match there. We go, it's a uh, Cam and Cam and Falaba taking on Eli Drake and Eddie Edwards, that odd strange bedfellows as Josh liked to call it. But, um, <laughs> the odd couple, <laughs> the odd, they definitely are the odd couple, man. But, uh, <laughs> I love the crowd on this one. They started off with the uh, the Eli Drake, ba Eli Drake, ba chant. They kept that going, which I, I thought was fun. Well, the uh, crowds lately have been hilarious, and so, sometimes a little uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, you know, half and half, fifty fifty. You know, you never know. It's it's never. You know, uh, all for this guy, done for that guy. It's you know, <laughs> impact crowds are unique. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. I think it's 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 the indie crowds in general as well are like this, and actually all the crowds, all the TV stuff. People just are are back to cheering for what's cool rather than who's the good guy and bad guy. Yeah, they I don't let people... they don't let them you know say okay, you have to cheer for this guy, you have to boo that guy. No, screw that. No, they they go out there and they got their favorites. Like I will cheer. Ethan Page, I don't care what he does. You know? Right, yeah. <laughs> He's one of my favorites. I love Ethan Page. You're right. No matter what he does, I'm going to cheer the guy, you know? Like, he could yeah. be dastardly heel, but I'll, I'll still cheer the guy. Right. But, um, no, that's, I think it's just the, the nature of the, the business nowadays. Fans are like that. But uh, this was a good match, man. It was, um, it was, it was quick. It was not a, not a, not a long match. It didn't need to be. I believe Cam is going on a he's on an appear, per appearance deal now, so you're not gonna get too much foul on Cam going forward. Maybe a little bit here and there bums me out because I feel like they should have gotten at least one tag run, a title run. But uh, that tag division was so goddamn stacked above them that it was like, when when would it happen? You know, well, but, and it was it was so based on violence and hardcore, and Cam and Fala Ba are such a a fun comedic oh yeah you know they 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 lighten up like it's like oh my god this guy was just you know bleeding from six different orifices okay now you gotta chill the crowd down send out cam and follow ba give them some laughs take their head off the chaos the blood the insane whatever they just saw five minutes ago you know they 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 balance the shows really good like that and, very and, well and, and cam and follow by have been wonderful at, at doing that and they, they work so well together they're like a a c- crazy version of han solo and chewy chewy is and how i like to <laughs> how i, I like, like to it. compare them because I, I love old star wars stuff so to hear them you know converse backstage and cam's com- completely carrying the entire conversation <laughs> next to the boz it's it doesn't get much funnier than that that's true. That, that's a good comparison, actually. I never thought about doing it the uh, the uh, the Chewy and <laughs> Han Solo reference. That's a good one. That is, that is a good one. That's perfect, actually, for them. But uh, what was not perfect was these two taking a, taking the loss because uh, Eddie distracted the referee and then tosses Eli Drake the kendo stick, the one that Eli supposedly is against. So um, 
interesting dynamic. It's like Eli is secretly embracing this. You know, he, um, you know, so he, he, he clocked uh, Cam over the head with it, t- took the pin on him. But no, yeah, he's like, it's almost like he's secretly embracing it while trying to get Eddie out of it. It's a weird, it's like, where are we going with it? So these two kind of continue to build their bond and, and, and go from there. But I'm, I'm confused where where do you go with it? Like, what do you, what, what is the most salvageable thing you can do with this? What do you think? Between uh, Drake and Edwards? Yeah. Um, it's, I mean, it's like, like he's, just a match. Like, do you go just into a match or what do you do? It's a, it, it's a, it's a total head game thing. I think Eli Drake sees he could use uh, Eddie Edwards to get what he wants, and that's some kind of gold. Mm. And so right now he's trying to get in his head, mold him to get and mold him and get him to trust him. That's one of the huge factors here. Trust Eli Drake. Who the hell trusts Eli Drake? Yeah, that's true. That's good... <laughs> no one trusts Eli Drake. That's a good one. <laughs> and that's just a fact of life. <laughs> that's just a fact. Good, good tie-in, Jay Bone. Good tie-in. I like it. I like it. You might get a t-shirt out of that one. Who knows? <laughs> right. No, that's cool. It, I guess it does come down to that. You're right. It's it, it, it's like, let's use this guy to get what I want, but let's see if we can coexist in the meantime. So and I don't know where the the stories you know where the stories go, but and I don't know where the stories go. But if they go where Eli wants them to go, he'll be happy. If they're not successful in getting tag team gold somewhere in the soon to we'll just say soon to near future, then well, we can kind of guess where it goes from there. But either right. either way, and I, I hear so many different opinions. I wanted to ask you this: Do you like what they're doing with Eli right now? I don't. Okay. I, I I feel like he could be a main eventer. He doesn't need to be in this. I, I, so much wasted opportunity with Eli Drake right now, man. I just think like the guy could be your top guy. You know, he is. He's got top guy written all over him. He does. He does. And I'm I'm starting to feel like, and and I just realized this with the departure of Allie, something clicked. Something yeah. clicked with the departure of Allie. I'm starting to feel like. Everyone that came in around or just before the time of the whole global force wrestling debacle. Yeah. I think like they're starting to get rid of all those people slowly. Trevor's gone. Allie's gone. Um, So many faces are gone. You know, EC3's gone. Some by their own choosing, some not. But it's like I'm starting to feel like. Eli Drake was a part of that whole kind of iffy period in, in TNA GFW impact history. And I'm like, I got a feeling like maybe, you know, but some people came into the company and didn't like him there to begin with. And they're, so they're kind of like, eh, what else have we got here? It could be. be, Cause like we said earlier, it's a, such a different company, man. It is. It truly is a whole different place. But he's. Uh, it sounds like he's happy there. I but... think Eli is a is a guy who's big on work life balance. You know, he uh, if you watch him online, the guy likes to do a lot of social stuff. He's got a great girlfriend he hangs out with. Uh, he's doing stuff in Hollywood. Like he likes that balance, and I think he's the kind of guy who. And I'm just I'm just speculating. I don't know yeah. that personally, but. I feel like he's the kind of guy, it's like if you told him you have to move to Orlando and give up your freedom, he'd just be like, hey, man, I'm 37 years old. Like, I really want to give up my, this. I, I live a great life in a beautiful place in Los Angeles. I'm, do, you want to, do you want to start all over there? Yeah. It's like, and and, and for, for a chance, it's like, yeah, I, think, I think he sees wrestling for what it is, and it's life is, is obviously a bigger picture, and let's enjoy it, you know? For 10 so, grand a month, is it worth it? Exactly. That's the thing. So it's like <laughs> less than that, even oh, down there. Those NXT guys, oh, it's less than that. That I heard, I heard that was the beginning average, depending on who you were in your past and whatever. So I'm sure some are getting significantly more than that, but that was what I, I heard a while mm. back. So I'm like, oh, okay, that, that, that doesn't sound like much. Yeah. I mean, if you don't know, if you don't know squat and you're getting in, yeah. Oh, yeah. Maybe it's not too bad. But. I- 
Honestly, from what I understand, it's even less than that, man. <laughs> but uh, but who knows? But anyway, um, well, yeah, man. So it's I think I think the guy the guy appreciates having a more of a a work life balance. But like I'm just speculating. I've met I've met him a few times. I don't know him personally, so we'll yeah. see where that goes, man. But uh, I guess I know some stuff that I saw, and and you know, hey, I I encourage everybody to keep watching. Just keep watching on this one. It's it's uh, it's cool. So. Well, right. you're never gonna be you're never gonna be bored watching him. I know that for damn sure. No, God, I just feel like he should have been the top guy. Yeah. The, the, the biggest wasted opportunity. I said this last week. The biggest wasted opportunity is you did not make him and EC3 your modern day Rock and Austin, Hogan Savage, you know, uh, Flair and Steamboat. These guys could have been your two top guys, and you could have built a goddamn company around these two guys. A franchise. Yeah, hundred percent. They 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 were the guys, two guys who can who look like a million bucks, who can talk and who can work. Come on, and you, and you can call them homegrown talents too. Homegrown talents, and they were they were characters. You know, they were great. Yeah, and it's like, how did you how did you never go with it, man? I feel like if this regime would have done it, but the previous didn't. But uh, <sighs> even even though this regime had a chance to do it too, but they were I think they were as soon as they got in, they were ready to write EC three off, so they never really had a chance. Yeah, but. Uh, all right, J Bone, we cut from that to uh, Johnny and Taya. They're arriving at the building, and the investigative reporter, Rolando Menendez, and he tries to get some word. <laughs> <laughs> this John- guy. I- <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Talk about oh, Rolando Menendez. Oh, uh, he's. <laughs> you don't see a lot of, you know, goofy, charismatic people like this. Usually they're pretty. I'm not going to sit. I, I, I shouldn't call. People like Melissa Santos and Mackenzie, what's her name? Mackenzie Mitchell. Mitchell. Would you, okay, see, I know she's not with the company anymore, but, but I shouldn't call them like stiff. Right. But you know, they're 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 fixated backstage that one area. They don't move. That's all they do. Right. This guy's all over the place. He's, you never know where he's gonna pop up backstage. I love I that actually, part. I love that part of it. He's annoying as hell, but I love him at the same time. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> First week, I was confused. I was like, who is this guy? Second week, I was like, all right, this guy's annoying. Third week, I was like, this guy's fucking brilliant. <laughs> I was like, this guy's fucking brilliant. Right? Because, because this week, he pops up all over the place. And I'm like, this is ridiculous. Like, this is hilarious. This dude is just, it, like, the perception is he's a lingering dirt cheat writer. <laughs> and he's just, like, waiting for that scoop. And I'm like, this is hilarious. He's like but, he's like the Ryan Satin of Impact Wrestling. Well, I think that's the key. So I think somebody pointed this out that... They felt that this whole thing was a way to make fun of all the dirt sheet writers. I mean, like yeah. you guys don't know shit. We got a we got a back we got a reporter running around backstage. You can't even get a scoop. What the hell and, do you guys know? And, and I, I know I know one personally that I've been friends with for a while now. And what's hilarious is they they block each other, they argue on Twitter, they cut each other down. You stole this. No, you stole this. It is oh hilarious. God. I um I don't know if you listen to it, but uh, Vince Russo has a show called Castrating the Marks. Have you heard of this thing? I've he... heard of it. I I take him in doses. Okay, so this <laughs> show is all about him tearing up the dirt sheet writers, and you just got to hear it to believe it, man. It is talk about slapping people with the truth. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Oh yeah, it's fun. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. But um, well, he's great. He's so he can't get any word. Johnny and Ty tell him that you'll you'll find out when everybody else does. So uh, you know, and he, he says he says uh, he says buy buy a ticket like the rest of the marks, <laughs> which I love. I was like, this is great. Like you want the story, buy a ticket like the rest of the marks. Yeah, so, I was like, I was like, oh, he said marks. Oh, God. yeah, I know. <laughs> he calls his marks, and then we go from that again. Rondo's backstage again, and uh, he knocks on the dressing room door. And Ty shoves him. He's like, he's, trying, he's like, you know, Ty, Ty, Johnny, I still need some word. Uh, you know, anything. Ty opens the door and shoves him into a garbage can. In the- <laughs> <laughs> and his reaction was great. It was, it was so much fun. He was, so, he was, just, he was just heartbroken. He was like, oh. <laughs> I, I, I think he's, he's great. He's super talented. He's the, guy, the guy's funny in that small dose he's giving. He's hilarious to me. But um, all right, man, we go from that. To uh, Rich Rich Swan, Willie St- Willie Mac backstage, 
getting ready for the match. Willie says he's going to take care of OVE if they try to come in and interfere. Ethan Page pops in out of nowhere, puts his arm around Willie and says, you should be more concerned about me and our match instead of Rich. Because, uh, And then he looks over at Rich and he says, Rich, I have, I have not stopped thinking about that exhibition title since homecoming. So it kind of gives him a warning, like, I got my eye on that thing, too. So um, and Rich, Rich and Willie kind of look at each other like, what the hell? But um, <laughs> it's cool. Ethan Page, throw, throw him into that mix a little bit. Yeah, but uh, we cut from that J Bone, uh, Ace Austin taking on Damian Hyde. Quick match, I think it was, it was only a few minutes. Explosive match though, and uh, Ace takes the win on this one. I thought it was funny that Don Callis, his uh, one of his quotes was something I've I've noticed about Ace Ace for a while. Was that Don Callis goes, look at those thick thighs on him, <laughs> and I just I just laughed because. I'm like, the guy's got some gigantic thighs, but just the way Don Callis delivers lines sometimes. He's, he's so like, athletic. He's so athletic, Josh. Oh, God. Look at those thick thighs. Are you kidding? <laughs> so, no, he's a... Uh... Love Callis. Oh, Callis is great. Callis is great. I, finally, I felt like Josh really plays off of him really well, he, and he puts Josh in his place, which is good. I, uh, I, was, ha- I was happy to see Damian Hyde here. And I know he's been called a a few different uh, names. I also cover, um, well, it's not on TV right now. It's in hiatus. Um, Ring Warriors was on WGN. I heard about this. I never watched it. No, I I heard it was good. They did tapings for all their shows in Samstown. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah, in Vegas. So So when Impact went to Samstown, I was like, oh, cool, I know that. And it's, I like Samstown. Some people don't. Some people don't like the, the venue, the Samstown for these tapings. Have you been I there? Do... Have you been there live? No. Okay. No. Can you tell them, before, you, and I just want to throw this out to you, and then as you're explaining, throw throw these answers in with us. Tell me what you, what you do like about, what's your attraction to it as you're explaining it. I like it because, like, well, my introduction to Samstown uh, was the Ring Warrior tapings, and then okay. Impact went there. Uh, it was sometime, to whatever it was, last year, and I was like, "Oh, when they the first set of tapings that Ring Warriors did, everything was all lit up, just like a regular arena. The next set of tapings they did several uh, episodes later." Mm-hmm. everything was black in the background. You couldn't see anything. And it reminded me of like old school wrestling. You see it on what ESPN, AWA way back in the day. All you saw was the ring lit up a little bit of ringside and you knew there was a big crowd back there, but you couldn't see crap. Mm-hmm. And that's what Sam's town reminds me of. You know, those bleachers are full back there, but you just can't see nothing. It or just remind, it just reminded me of old school stuff. So that's why I like it. Um, but yeah, I, I like it. I, I don't think the acoustics are that great in Sam, in Sam's town. I feel like, um, it like, does you it know, injustice. The, I think, I think it does the show injustice, right? Cause you're right. The acoustics are not good. Yeah. Like I think, I think the crowd is good in that setting. Those tapings have been, I would say successful, absolutely successful, but it just doesn't come through audibly. Right. You know, and I hate this, I hate to say bike the crowd, but if that's what you got to do to make them sound a little louder, because you know, you know, the fans are there. They're good crowds. You just can't hear them as well. You know, totally maybe, you, maybe you got to do something with the, maybe the next set of tapings they go out there. But other than that, it's a great setting. There's some, they got success out there. That's amazing. And I think it's it, it does say something because Ring of Honor goes there, um, Ring Ring Warriors Impact. It's obviously they got a draw. I mean, people are coming to that venue to watch. Yeah, look so. at the ECW uh, arena. Yeah, everyone's going there now. Tommy Dreamer's like he can barely get his in his own place anymore. Impact is going there, debuting there. Uh, what next month or whatever it was? May, yeah, in May. And uh, MLW's been there. Uh, Ring of Honor's been doing shows there. Everyone and anyone has been there, and it's yeah, it's crazy. That's nuts, man. It's um, it, it is cool how that venue kind of came out of nowhere like that. But uh, yeah. Uh, but anyway, man, um, Ace Austin took the win. He, you know, with a finishing move, the fold, 
Uh, I don't think he's. I think I know what they're doing. They're building him up. You know, it's kind of like that build up, get to know him kind of thing. But this guy's going to need a really good, you know, a 12 minute match to really showcase himself. You know, good opponent, someone who can really help Ace Austin stand on his feet, though. You know, as as his own deal. They're, what, they're nice little preview matches to just give you a dose of what he's about. Because I've yeah. seen him in House of Hardcore and MLW. And, and um, a couple other places, I think. Um, and he, and I've seen the same thing that he's doing here, which is fine, except he's very over. And this is the first place I've seen him super cocky. Yeah. And like, and like, you know, verbally cocky. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, like, okay, this this kid is new. People are excited about him. But it, it looks like he's going to be a heel. You think so? Interesting. Yeah, yeah oh, because okay. I, 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 if you watch last week's to this week's, uh huh, big difference in his attitude. Really? I, yeah. no, I, I, you caught me by surprise now. I would never would have guessed that. No oh, way. Yeah, it, which is refreshing because you know guys like we have so many new guys like this. Like we got the whole Rascals crew. They're all baby faces. Everyone loves them. If you bring in a bunch more guys like that, it's going to be oversaturated. You bring in a guy like Ace Austin, also super talented from that area, boom, you got to make him heal. That's true. Very, very true, man. I think uh, that's a good point. Let's see what they do. I, I'd be interested to see. Um, he's a talented guy. I like that, you, like you said, they're building him. They're showing a little... Um, Kind of just getting him, getting people ready for like the big explosiveness of him down the line. So, yeah. good call on that. Good call on that. Uh, we go from there to like a little hype video, kind of secretive, but they hyped a return in two weeks. Now, it looked like a woman. Uh, they did already kind of mention that Madison Rain is coming back to the company. Yeah. So I'm <laughs> guessing that was her. If they didn't do a press pass two weeks ago featuring her comeback, it would have been like, oh, who? Who is this? You know? Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. It's, I mean, if you're a fan of hers, great. You know, I'm not mega excited. I just want her to have good matches with the younger girls. You know, I'm like, whatever. I agree. I think she's in a point where she's has to start putting in girls over. It's like, you've done everything you could at Impact. You know, like, now is your turn to be the veteran who helps other people become veterans. And so I'm hoping that's the plan, how she's going to be used. I don't want her to. I don't want, really want to see her getting big pushes. I think it's pointless right at this stage in her career. So yeah. let's see where it goes, man. Uh, then they showed a little more Sammy and Rich on a video, and then from there, uh, Josh is in the ring, and it's a Johnny and Ty Valkyrie in ring interview, and a lot of why why Johnny, and he says he did it because the internet smart marks aren't worth a damn, basically. <laughs> so he basically was like, that's why. <laughs> He doesn't care about the. He's like, I don't care about the fans. He r- runs down the fans. He basically says where he doesn't want to deal with smart marks. Uh, <laughs> he says that he did everything right. That he he that the marks moved moved on from him so easily. And the Kyle Cage, they no no they used to call Cage a meathead and whatnot. And they used to insult him, and um and and now like they they back Cage over him and what the hell. You know, and he and he starts digging on Cage, right? He starts saying, "Oh, you icy Cage in the back, just doing his meal prepping and reposting his <laughs> tweets, you know, and, and taking pictures of his biceps." And <laughs> he just starts running Cage down. But basically, the, so the heel turn is the basis is you people turned on me, you know. Basically, I, don't, I didn't yeah. turn on you. Yeah. Which, which, hey, listen, which is true because the next note I have written down here is that his promo still suck. It's like, dude, they now. They're still being delivered terribly. And somebody mentioned that, uh, what if the terrible promo is on purpose to get heat? Like, I, I guess. I don't, but I don't think so. I think he's always just been bad on the mic, man. I think, well, he's, he's come a long way. If you, oh, watch, yeah. if, if you watch the last few seasons of Lucha Underground, I think it, it, as cheesy as some of that stuff is that he's done as a heel as Johnny Mundo on there, it's really helped him character wise, especially here. 
You know, mm-hmm. and and I get what you're saying. I know some people are just they got it stuck in their head. They're like, nah, he still sucks. Well, <laughs> well, give him a minute because we finally got heel Johnny back. True, you know, and um, which is I, I've been waiting for this because I've been watching it for years, and now we finally got it here because we can when he came into Impact uh, a couple of years ago or whatever it was. I was like, oh, this guy's squeaky clean. Ty is not even with him. Oh, they need to change this. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I gotta say, he's better. He's a better heel, though. He's a better heel than he's a face. No question about it. So yeah. let's see what happens with it. You know, shit. <laughs> Johnny, Johnny neck brace. Just give him just give a time. Just give it time. <laughs> I love it. I love when he calls him Johnny neck brace. Uh, <laughs> Johnny also throws in, he goes, How can I be loyal to you when you're not loyal to me? I cheated on you with myself, and I won, and I loved it. He says, and then Ty jumps up. <laughs> yeah, it was good. That's a good. It was a good line. It was a good line. Ty jumps in there, and she calls. Uh, she calls Jordan Gray short, and that the mar- the fan marks, and she tells the fan marks how they don't dictate anything, and how they turn on her husband. So she's defending her husband and throws in a little hype for her match in there too so oh well, what's funny is when she's doing this if you look behind her it, at johnny's expression on his face he goes cross-eyed puffs his cheeks out like he's like a blowfish and does like a wobble oh as I didn't as, catch as, that. as as if as if to call Jordan, you're like short and fat, and it's like, oh shit, <laughs> yeah, it's like he, he didn't. He just made the face. That's all he had to do, and it was just like, oh, <laughs> wow, I didn't even catch that at all. Yikes! <laughs> but uh, now I gotta go back and watch that. Now, now I'm curious. Now I want to see that shit. <laughs> we go from that J Bone to uh, Rosemary and and James Mitchell in the background, uh, in the backstage area. This was one of the cooler segments tonight. And uh, basically, it's Rosemary saying, like, you, you promised you'd give me the bunny, but you gave me a soulless meat suit. You know, where is she? And uh, he tells her, you need to talk to him. You know, and he's like, she's like, who's him? And he's like, you need to talk to him to get your bunny's soul back. And they play up a lot of the devil thing, you know, like he's, yeah. he's talking about James Mitchell's, oh, I'm his, I'm his right hand man, you know, and you're not allowed to, you know, make something here and do something, all that. So it's, a lot of playing. It's basically a lot of calling of the devil without mentioning the devil. <laughs> but oh, uh, yeah. basically, it's like a lot of questions. Who is him? You know, who is the uh, who? Who is the guy? Like, who are we talking about? Is it going to be on screen? Is it an allusion to the devil? Where do we go with this? So, yeah, so, I, I I got a feeling. Well, see, the the funny thing about Allie is this was supposed to be her last week on TV, and this wasn't. She wasn't even there. Oh, that's right. So I don't know exactly how they're going to wrap this up next week. I just, I just hope they do a halfway decent job because th- th- there's there's an air of awkwardness now that it's like, oh, she's done, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> I still like, have a feeling that she might show back up, and it's going to be one of those, you know, kind of loan out per appearance deal type of things. I got a feeling that's where they're, they're headed with this kind of stuff. We'll see. We'll see. It, I, I My prediction is that she's basically in the undead realm, and um, she's basically in the undead realm, and they uh, she'll be gone for a while. And then maybe in a year from now, yeah, she's on loan from uh, AEW. And who knows? Maybe <laughs> maybe they, they find her somehow, you know? I, I have a feeling this is not going to end well. Like it, this is gonna be like one of the first stories that has a real dark ending to it, and it's gonna so. and it's gonna leave Rosemary in a really bad place with Jim and the whole dark realm thing, and um, yeah, I just got a feeling they're gonna go dark with this. I I I don't know. I feel like that'd be a good way to go with this to like really expand on Rosemary's character because she's been gone for so long. Yeah, I agree, and it's a good way for Jim Mitchell to get a little more. He, the guy's brilliant, man. Oh, he so, is. To get that guy on TV a little more and to do some more stuff, so I think that's very, very needed. So if you can do that, hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, and, go and I know not everybody is a fan of this storyline and the whole backstage, the supernatural aspect of this. But as long as it's done in doses, I think it's okay. You know. Okay. Yeah, let's see what happens, man. Let's see. I, I think I think you're right. That's going to be dark because. 
it's the only, kind of the only way, only place you can go from here. <laughs> yeah, because if if Allie's not going to be around anymore, right? That means it's it's either going to be Rosemary loses Allie. Period. You know, b- uh, you know, bad end of story, or she rescues Allie and sets her free, and she moves on to the next. You know, positive. You know, goes to heaven, or you know that kind of you know positive ending. Right. So either way, either way, see where it ends up. Yeah. All right, man. We go from there to Ethan Page and Willie Mack. This is the match you alluded to earlier. Um. So you know what this? I like this because this was a nice long match, man. This was a crowd was really pro Willie. Um. Ethan Ethan Page is a heavy heavy heel. He kind of really plays up the um his his heel aspect and stuff. Oh, and yeah. uh, I love these, that. These two have great um, chemistry. I love it. I think I think that's great. And uh, <laughs> the the highlight of this one was that when Willie Mack does this finisher, right? Or not finisher, but like a setup move where he, he shoves the guy, into the, he throws the guy into the corner, and he goes and he runs and he gives him like a butt spot, you know. And uh, Josh, Josh goes to Don. <laughs> Do you know where I'm going with this? I know exactly where you're going with this, and I laughed my ass off when he told when he said it. Go ahead. Josh goes down. What do you call that move of Willie's? And he goes, "A whole lot of ass." <laughs> <laughs> I fucking lost it. I fucking like. Oh, wait a minute. The way he just says it, a whole lot of ass. <laughs> oh, was, he said it like he's been like waiting a week to say it. He's like, oh, <laughs> that's the first time he used it. I was like, well, fitting. <laughs> It was a, uh, it was really cool. It was, it was just like it just popped us. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, that's that's done for you. But uh, Willie Mack used the stunner, gets the win on this one over Ethan. I, I just think Ethan is losing a lot, but I feel like he is kind of in this weird holding pattern until uh, Josh Alexander makes his debut and they get to be the Monster Mafia again. Now, are you familiar with Monster Mafia at all? The tag team with him and Josh Alexander? I'm not. The only thing I'm familiar with those two being together is I just saw a picture of Ethan and um you just said his name. Uh Willie Mack? No, the you said the Oh was, Josh Alexander, I'm sorry. Alexander, Josh, yeah, that's yeah. okay. Uh I they just saw a picture of those two together and I was like, hmm. Well that's interesting. They're both Canadians. Hmm, maybe there's something there. And well, I know that Josh right. Alexander just signed a contract with Impact, and I, I yes. know that, uh, well, assuming he's going to show up soon on tapings. So, yeah, I Ethan Page needs something, either be put with someone for a tag team. He needs a few wins. Not that he has to win all the time, but right. he's been in a bit of a bad streak. He's, yeah, he can't lose all the time either. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah, he's he's too good for that. And that's the thing that's that's bugging me. It's like, man, you're 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 constantly sacrificing this poor guy. Yeah. But him and Josh were a tag team called the Monster Mafia, and they were great. And um, yeah, you know, Josh had a neck injury. He stopped for a bit, came back, and all that stuff. So Josh, man, uh, um, Josh Alexander's great. And these two, I, I I said a couple weeks ago, I'm like, I think they're just having him in a holding pattern until they get that. Um, that whole thing set up, so uh, with Josh and everything. So I think once that's that's flowing, I think you're going to see Ethan Page get a little bit more into the mix of things. That'd so, be great, you know. Yeah. And, and I'm not, um, I you know, I don't know a lot about Josh Alexander. I saw a few shows from Impact, uh, like one night only, or it was like a Twitch special or something. I saw, I saw he had a, a cage match with Callahan last yes. year. Yes. Yeah, that was a good match. That was really insane. Match. I was like, wow, this guy is... I was like, who's this guy with this helmet? What the... Oh, my God. Yeah, he was. he's good. He's very good, man. Be ready for him. I, I, I know him personally. He's a good dude, man. He's a really, really hardworking guy. Uh, you're in for some fun with him, for sure. Yeah. For sure. All right, we cut there, man. We're back. Johnny and Ty again. Rolando. He, he's, he's dedicated to get that scoop, man. He's not letting it go. <laughs> And uh, and <laughs> the line something smells like hot garbage came up here, which was hilarious. I forgot who said it though. I didn't know who said it. That was Johnny. Johnny, okay, 
It was Johnny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. because he did, the last time we saw him was in the garbage can, and then he he's like, oh, oh, someone, that's right, that's right. Someone smells like hot garbage. <laughs> um, Cross confronts Johnny as he's walking away, and uh, Johnny whispers something to him, and he and Cross just kind of says, "Bravo," and and then. Uh, and then, you know, then he walks away, and then Cross is kind of sitting there, neutral, kind of smirking. But then he kind of smirks, and then the smirk turns into an angry face. Do you catch that? Like, yeah, I was a little <laughs> like, like, like. There's something going on between them, and they're just gonna like take baby steps with this, and I'm good with that because yeah. there's, there's something t- just like okay, these two are so in bed together, it's not even funny. <laughs> oh, it was great. I, I was like, I was like, basically, what he's trying to show is like, I'm just using this guy to get where I need to go. You know, just, that's all this is. <laughs> so uh, that's how I saw it. But um, but I, I think it's great. That's another great element on the Krill Cross aspect, man. That dude is that's the man right there. So he's, the guy's brilliant. He's gold. Gold. He's, he's gold. And, and gold. I'm. It's like everyone who I see online is like a big Killer Cross fan. Like, Why isn't he champ? And I'm like, guys, just. He's on TV every week. Just chill. Yeah. Just relax. <laughs> give it, give it, give it time. Give it time. He's he's barely into this. He's barely in this company. Just give it time. Just let it simmer. Yeah. You know exactly. The, you know the people that are working with him that brought him in for something special. Right. Just give it time. Yeah, I mean, like, what's the right? We live in a generation though, J Bone, where everybody wants everything yesterday. You know what I mean? So five minutes ago. Yeah, so it's like, hey, let this be the one thing you wait for, because you'll really appreciate it. So it'll get there. You know, it'll get there with, um, with things. But uh, well, yeah, man. So we go from that to uh, Disco Inferno, and he's in a bar, and <laughs> Rolando Shut finds up. him. So Rolando finds him in the bar, and he's like, uh, he's like, he's like, this is how you train. Like, what are you doing? And Disco is being phenomenal, and he's just like, <laughs> he just basically shits on the whole like women's revolution thing and he says uh he says a woman cannot be the man and i was like "Ooh, that's a shot at somebody <laughs> i thought that was fantastic oh i i think it's great just, just because everyone loves becky lynch right now and she's so popular and uh this whole you know becky movement and the man and everything and yeah it's and, and, and people can twist this into, oh, it's a shot at the WWE. No, it's just, it's a, uh, don't even, don't, don't overthink this. He's just yeah. being, he's chauvinistic and it's just, that was an easy jab at women in general. Exactly, yeah. exactly. But it's fun, take it in fun. I thought it was great. It is, uh, it is. And it's it's also great because I I, I like seeing him in, uh, there's another aspect of uh, Ring Warriors I'm bringing here. Uh-huh. Um, he's a manager of a tag team called the Slam Beanos, which is yeah. kind of like a, a, a comedic version of like an old, say, uh, uh, what was the uh, like the FBI from ECW? Yeah, yeah. And so he's a uh, he's a manager for those guys on that show, and I was like, oh, okay. And uh, and now he's doing this on Impact, so he's used to the comedic stuff and he's good with that and he can be snarky and get over that way and so yeah this has been interesting just watching him uh evolve into it's like oh, what the hell's he doing on this show oh okay <laughs> so, <laughs> that's cool man it's a it's another comedic side to the show which is it's you need like i said you you need stuff like that you do otherwise where's the show yeah, you, know, you just want straight match, match, match. It doesn't mean anything. You, you yeah. need something. You need, you need to mix it up. It's got to be a hodgepodge, you yeah. know, potpourri, I should say. There you but, go. All right, man. So we go from that to um, Miss Santos. She's outside management's office, and Gail comes out, and uh, Gail basically says they're taking this pretty seriously. Like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in trouble. Basically, she, what she's saying is this is not as easy as, as I thought it was. So. She uh she looks pretty defeated and she walks out. So I don't know what they're gonna do with with uh, Gail Kim, man. Who knows what what the plan is? But um, we're supposed to that. find we're supposed to find out uh, this Friday, right? And against yes. all odds, is when the the big 
whatever she's supposed to do with Tessa. Yes. So we'll find that out. Um, okay. That'll be come. That'll be culminating now. So I mean, look, Gail looks amazing. She can still go. Uh, why the hell not? <laughs> she can. Oh so yeah. Who, so who knows? Who knows where they're going with that? But um, let's see what do I got. What happened next here? Cut, cut, we cut right from that to the um, Lucha Brothers and LAX, and so it's, it was like one of, I, which I love. I love continuous camera. Like the camera was on. Um, you know, Melissa Santos and uh, Gail Kim. Yeah. You know, they finished up the same camera shot found those two tag teams brawling. And he kind of followed them. And uh, they're brawling, man. They're going to the back. And they're, they're, just, they're basically just pissed off at each other. Oh, and yeah. I love I love that the camera caught that right away. But um, it was uh, it was fun. It was good. I mean, these two is few is is repetitive, but it's still f- engaging, when, which is a key, which is a big key to the whole thing. Oh, yeah, and and I think the most interesting part of this is trying to figure out what Conan's going to do. Mm, that's true. That's very true, because it's like he's in the middle. He's tied to both, because right now it seems like he's more with uh, LAX, like he wants them to have their, you know, their titles back. Sure. But he still wants to support... Pentagon and Phoenix, because they're close, they're like family. They're all right. like family together. Absolutely. But Absolutely. things are getting really twisted and dark. And yeah, I'm just waiting for Conan to like, you know, swerve and like, you know, screw LAX. And because I've even heard some other opinions like, hey, maybe after all this hot mess is done and uh, the Lucha Brothers, uh, uh, or, you know, keep their tag team ch- uh, championships after all this, maybe um, they'll split up LAX because I think there's a fan base out there that wants to see what Ortiz and Santana can do separately. Oh, okay. And I've never thought that until like recently, but it's like they- they're one of the best tag teams out there in the world right now, in my opinion. No question. No question but, about it. And, it, and it's, splitting them up almost scares me, but I think somewhere down the road, I, I wouldn't mind seeing it. Yeah. The thing is, it's like, man, they have such a good synergy right now. It's like, yeah. Did you did you ever want the Rock and Roll Express to split? You know, and when they did, it wasn't great. I mean, something you didn't want to see. You know, <laughs> things like that. I go, I go, yeah. I. I I use that as the example. It's like, man, these are, these are such homegrown guys who are so close in real life. It's like, ah, man, it's like I don't, want, I don't want to see it. <laughs> you know? Yeah, but yeah, but yeah, we go from that, man. Um, oh, oh, Willie Mack is walking backstage and um, goes into his dressing room, and uh, Ove attacks him in his dressing room, and you hear you get this very comedic, uh, <laughs> you get this very uh, comedic like like this. Uh, you Bop, like the bam, sound. Boom. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> wop, walla, bang, boom, pow, and all that. And basically, it's like you're thinking Willie Max getting his ass kicked. And door opens, Willie Mac comes in, comes out walking out. And he's like, oh, those fools or something like that. So it's like, it's, <laughs> it's so Looney Tunes. You know, those things are so Looney Tunes. Uh, I love them, though. You know, it's it's a it's a fun, fun thing to do. But um, that's our. <laughs> so, yeah, it was just funny. Well, it, it also put in your it also put in your head that oh, this means Rich Swan has a great chance of retaining because it's going to be one on one now. No one else. Here's the key part. No one else is going to come out and interfere, right? Big time, big time. I think that's a, that's a big, good point. Very good point there because you you kind of were always worried. It's like oh man, it's going to be a fair fight. You got goddamn OVE lurking around, and it's going to mm-hmm. be a squad. It's like this this match, we've been waiting for this match to have a nice, good send off. And it's like and it's like you want it to be clean because you want to at least see what where these guys take all this. Because you yeah. know it can be good one on one. hundred percent. hundred percent. So I think that's um I think that's a big part of that. So yeah, I'm glad I'm glad as as goofy is um as it could be, as as that part was, it was like it makes so much, so much sense. So keep definitely I'm all for it. Mm-hmm. But we go from that, man, the big showdown, exhibition championship on the line. Sammy Callahan taking on Rich Swan. I love this, J-Bone. It was a tough match, man. I was like, it was like they were tough. 
there was no there was no time to smile or do do spots. It was like this was a this was just like a tough, badass match with a lot of stories. And I like that Josh and Don were really playing it up too. Yeah, man, they were just so into it, man. Super into it. It was a great match. Uh, the spit spot was disgusting, by the oh, way. Oh God. So nice. Callahan, he's so nasty. I mean, you know, we we have times where, you know, Swan is in a match and he gets hit real hard, stares blankly into the camera and, you know, lets out a loogie. Yeah. But then there's this and, you know, Callahan just, you know, he he spits. What did Callahan say? Oh, exchanging pleasantries. (laughs) (laughs) I it's like, so gross. Oh, I, yeah, there's that. <laughs> well, last you last we get Tommy Dreamer gets spit on the face. He he took it off of his hands and swallowed it. I go, oh, Jesus Christ, what is happening over here? <laughs> oh, that was the week before. That's right. He uh, wiped his face and he ate it. It was oh, like, oh, so disgusting. I'm thinking of, I'm getting queasy thinking about. It, to be honest with you, it's gross, so gross. Holding back vomit at ringside. <laughs> <laughs> First time I puke on a podcast, but. Uh, um, the uh, I um, what was I gonna say? So at Rich go, I like that Rich went nuts after that spit spot. Like he loses it. He is uh, he's uh, you know, just this punching and kicking and going intense. So I thought that was fun that it kind of triggered him to wake up and go nuts. Oh yeah. Uh, he reverses uh, some flaunting by Sammy, you know, and uh, and takes the win. So. Rich retains on this one, you know. Rich, Rich keeps it, which I was very shocked on because I, I just feel J Bone that OVE needs a title, you know. And and the exhibition one's a good one to if you're gonna have Sammy built up for it. Callahan, Callahan, desperately at this point of being with this company and everything that you know, love him or hate him, he has done so much for this company over Thank the course you. of the last calendar year. Huge. It's social media, events, eyes on the product. It's he's so valuable. And I'm so glad he's sticking with him and that um the uh, the the Chris brothers are sticking with him too. And he he needs a championship badly. This is where having a mid one would do great. I mean you have yeah. Sammy lead that until he gets a little higher, but I don't know, they just can't they can't stick to one, man. But um I uh, I, love, I think he's he's the best. He's he's the top guy right now. He's the guy who is the most convincing. He keeps me very interested. I think he's great. But when he, Rich uh, Rich retains on this. But one thing I caught J Bone on this one. There's two two callouts I have on this front, and both from commentary. One thing is I'm big on I'm big on moves being branded. I was thinking one of those things are like I remember a couple weeks in a row Trey hit that double knee thing off the um off the top rope. And Josh Matthews is like, oh, Trey with the knees. And he gets the win. It's like, why don't, you, why don't we have a name for that? Why is there no name for these finishers sometimes to brand these finishers, you know, and whatnot? I get people hooked. So one thing that bothered me on this match was that uh, was that there was an STF performed. And nobody called. And Josh didn't mention it. And it's like, yeah, that might be a small thing. I'm an old school guy, though. It's like. Tell people why that move is what it is. Like, be like, yeah, it's oh my god, and I step over to old, to old, you know, to old face lock. It's like, yeah. why didn't you, why didn't you call that out? Like, you're just letting it be. Oh, Sammy Callahan with a, with a, uh, uh, he's bending rich over or something. It's like, call out what the hell it is. Like, invest, get people invested into moves again. Every once in a while, I feel like commentary gets like hot in the calling everything, and then all of a sudden they'll have like a little like brain fart like oh yeah there's the 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 the, the thing <laughs> you know, yeah like, <laughs> i get it it's not it's not an easy not an easy uh thing right i mean like you're performing you're on commentary it's not easy i mean you want to do right by it but uh, yeah, i'll be talking about stuff and i'll i'll forget shit all the time that's why i love my viewers because they're always like oh it's that and i'm like oh yeah of course it is thank you <laughs> they, they fill in my little you know senile moments you know there you go <laughs> There you go. But we can't uh, forget we can't forget the most important part of this ending. Yes, yes, I'm I'm, I'm getting I'm getting there. So well, one more <laughs> thing I wanted to I wanted to call it one more thing though. Okay. I don't know if you caught this. When Sammy first started attacking Rich, uh before we had the, the run in, Sammy starts attacking Rich uh right away. 
And Josh slips and he goes, who, who is that? Oh, I mean, I mean, what is that? You know, or, or no, he goes, he goes, who the hell? Oh, I mean, I mean, what the hell? And I'm like, <laughs> oh, you kind of gave away. There's a who the hell coming, <laughs> you know, like. Oh, so I, I didn't catch, I see, no, I didn't catch that. Yeah, he goes, he first goes, who the hell? I mean, I mean, what the hell? And it's like, he knew the guy was supposed to run out, you know, but it's like, yeah. when? And um, it was, uh, yeah, you know, minor, minor um, mistake, nothing too crazy, but, uh, you know, just something that caught my ear. But <clears throat> we did have a run in. Oh, yeah. A big, big hoss son of a bitch ran in and uh, got the back of Sammy Callahan and, um, Took care of Rich Swan. I thought it was another funny thing, though. Josh goes, oh, my God, that's Madman Fulton. Oh, oh, it's Madman Fulton. And I'm, like, thinking to myself, who the fuck is Madman Fulton? Like, the way he's sitting there saying it, I'm supposed to know who he is. And I'm like, that's not how it works. I, I w- You need – it's like, why, why, did, why was I invested in that guy? You should have told me, oh, that's Madman Fulton. He's one of Sammy's students from Ohio, and he's trained just like him. He's a psychopath, maybe even more than Sammy. That's how the conversation should have gone. <laughs> yeah, they could have they could have thrown a few. I mean, I knew who it was immediately because I've been waiting for him to show up on TV. Um, he's what's funny about him is watching Sammy on different brands, Sammy doesn't change. You see him on MLW, he's still nasty, Sammy, spit, slobbering, hardcore, crazy motherfucker, okay? Sure. He did not, he does, did not, I don't know if, if he's like gone from MLW for a while, he hasn't been on TV for a while. But uh, last year, he would always show up with two big guys, Leon White and Fulton. Now, Leon White, is that, are we talking Vader's kid? Yeah, I think that's his name. I I'm not sure if I, I could be wrong with the with okay. the name. I think that's his name, but it's some big bald guy. Um, gotcha. I was like, it's like Vader. Yeah, I think because uh, he's Leon I, White. Andre Vader. Andre uh, asked me that too, and I'm like, no, I think that's his name. I could be wrong. It's it's something White or something. I don't know, but um, it's a big guy that was you know just as big and nasty as Fulton. Um, but those were his guys in MLW. He didn't have the Chris brothers in down in MLW. Mm-hmm. So, you know, same guy, different universe, different set of characters. But then all of a sudden on these like Twitch one night only kind of shows that uh, uh, they would do in uh, Callahan's neck of the woods, you know, mm-hmm. Impact would partner up with him. All of a sudden we started seeing him, Fulton, show up on a couple of these type of shows. And that got me thinking. I was like, oh, Ooh. oh, oh, this, yeah. <laughs> there you yeah. go. Yeah, go with this. Go with this. <laughs> yeah, he's good. He's got a good, he's a huge guy, man. Good look. He never got his due shot and just bad timing in WWE. You know, he was how many different characters in NXT had a couple injuries, was supposed to be a part of Sanity when they made their debut with Eric Young, and then he had another injury. Oh, gotcha. Okay. And How long was he there? Uh, several years. I got to look it up, but he was there a long time. Um, But honed his craft, and, you know, I mean, he's another big guy, but... Um, you know, we got to see what he's going to do here. He's uh, obviously going to be helping Callahan get Callahan what he wants. So, um, yeah, he's his muscle now. He's his muscle. I yeah. I mean, it, the, the Chris brothers are great. They're so underrated as a tag team and individually, but Callahan really needed that extra exclamation point to help get, get done what he wants to get done. Yeah. I'm no so doubt. glad he's got Fulton now. Yeah, this guy seems pretty cool. He's only 28 years old, too, man. Makes me feel old as shit. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like looking at, he's born in 1990. I'm like, oh my God, I remember 1990. <laughs> I was, I was laughing when they said, oh my God, this seven footer. And I was like, okay, now I got to look it up and see exactly. He's like six, eight. Yeah. But he's, he's still flipping towered over Willie Mack and everyone else. 
Yeah. He's a big fucker. Yeah, I was a big, big, big fucker for sure. Yeah. But that was it, man. So Mad Matt Fulton is there. He comes in. Uh, you know, Rich might have retained the belt, but Sammy gets the last laugh. Obviously, this is not over. This is yeah. not over at all. So um, we'll see where did they take you, it from there. Did you notice the uh, when he propped up Rich Swan against Fulton and then hit him with the bat? Did you see what he did with him? No. He did. He kind of did the the Shawn Michaels Ric Flair. I love you. Send off. <laughs> really? He he kissed him. He kissed him on the forehead. Back backed up. Got ready. Said I love you, and then just nailed him with the bat. And I was like, Oh my god! It's <laughs> Shawn Michaels Flair all over again. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome yeah. that's awesome but that's it guys that was the march 22nd episode of impact wrestling exciting jay bone we're heading into against all odds now so fun times coming up man this this i think i felt one of my notes that i had here was i think they essentially touched on every storyline going on every single one got some some time today yeah i mean and i i it, against all odds is kind of like one of those in between yeah in between ones, of course, you know, the, 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 the free previews, whatever you want to call them. Um, but there's still going to be some significant storyline happenings going on, uh, this week to like, you know, push everything to that next level towards rebellion. And, um, you know, and then we got United, we stand, which they're really, I mean, they're promoting it, but there's really no TV stuff involved there, which is fine. It's gonna be on. That's gonna be on the Fight app or Fight TV, I believe. It's still gonna air. Yeah, it originally was gonna be on Twitch, and then yes. they decided to put it on Fight and just. I think they're charging like twenty bucks for it, which ain't bad. Nah, worth it no. for me for that it, card. It, come on. Some yeah. some fans are so pissed. It's like, okay, do you understand? This company is trying to make money again. Yeah, it's like it's like why would they give it for free, man? I think it'd be logical. I, I guess it's because they did change their mind halfway through. But hey, there's a fine print there, Jay Bro, Jay Bro, on every wrestling poster out there, and it says "card subject to change." Yeah. <laughs> so there you go. They yeah. tell you it's gonna happen. It's so, it's worth twenty bucks. Oh, yeah. totally. Come on, that main event alone's worth twenty bucks. Yeah, uh, yeah. The, the the card's loaded. I can't wait. So between this week and and next week at United, we stand. Um, I mean, they're two separate things completely, but just saying overall what's going on in impact wrestling is just a, just a ton of fun right now. Sure. You're absolutely. Well, cool, man. All right, let's enjoy I appreciate you joining me, man. This was an awesome review. Thank you very much. We went late. We got a lot of good content down, man. I think it was fun to, to talk about this episode. It was a, a, there was a lot going on, a lot to process. Yeah. So, um, yeah. we got I'm one glad- more- Glad I could be here, man. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. We got one more, guys, from Las Vegas. We're going to be finishing up uh, next week from Zamstown. Then it's off to Windsor on the road to Rebellion coming up. So, j why don't you give us some plugs, man? Where can everybody find you? Where can they connect with you, talk to you, tell you how you did? You know, we got some vocal listeners here, guys. I expect at least one of you guys to tweet j well, about uh, <laughs> if you can find me on Twitter uh, at jbone fifty one fifty, I run Smash This podcast. I've been uh, doing my YouTube channel for uh, five plus years now, and uh, it feels like finally within the last year, it's really starting to get a nice little following going. Trying to get those numbers up to get monetized again, and uh, just you know, really trying to. It's the first time in the last five years that I'm really starting to care what's going on with the channel i'd had no goals before but now i'm really trying to you know make it grow and and being a part of a few different wrestling communities with wrestling with wrestling.com and um which is a great website a lot of different content creators on there being uh podcasts reviews uh international stuff too please go check it out also with um uh the wrestle addict radio where i do my impact reviews and uh there's a a handful of podcasts and they're also i want to quick throw this in there because i told the guys i would they're doing something really special this coming um wrestlemania weekend and i know we're i know we're talking about impact wrestling here but but they cover a bunch of different stuff and they're uh they're earning money for a good cause rant with ant is uh 
a, a great podcast there. Um, they got a rant gala going on, uh, WrestleMania weekend. Also, the um, fourth wall podcast is earning money for a local uh, McDonald's house charities. And uh, they got a special event going on WrestleMania weekend too. So $5 gets you in. You can hang out with the guys from the podcast. Unfortunately, I'm one of the few guys from that family that's not going to be here. That That's not going to be at the event, but I'm, I'm doing my best to plug it. So they're raising money for a good cause. Lots of stuff going on this weekend. Go over to their uh, social medias or go over to rantwithant.com for all the details. There you go, man. That's it. So uh, cool. You got a lot going on, Jay Bone. Shit. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's it's nice to have my you know hand in a couple different things and to help contribute to some different you know wrestling causes and stuff like that. It's a lot of fun. It's keeps me busy, keeps me out of trouble, and you know. There you go, brother. There you go. I'm glad. That sounds like a lot of fun, man. So. Cool. Do we miss anything? Is there any other plugs in there we missed? Uh, Instagram, fa- anything else? Facebook, you want to plug those? No, oh, I'm on Facebook, too. You can look up, uh, um, I can't think of what the hell. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'll, if you if you look up my, uh, the YouTube channel, J-Bone, or, you know, look up Smash This Podcast, you'll yeah. find all the shows, all of the um social medias are listed in the description of every single video there you go it's on instagram it's on twitter it's on facebook um but that's about it (laughs) anything beyond that yeah it's like all right that's enough (laughs) there we go awesome awesome well that's all that's great to hear guys as always you can find me at vanilla joke on instagram twitter and facebook take a look you know, get uh, get connected up with me. You can find this podcast at We Talk Impact on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Connect with us on those social medias too. We pin a lot of, post a lot of stuff, let you know what's going on with us. Uh, you know, I gave a heads up that hey, when I was in Windsor, hey, it's on the Facebook page you let, and and Twitter. I gave a heads up to the first bunch of people. Hey, Trent's in Windsor, so come on down, say hello. So uh, we'd love to be interacting with you guys. So please connect with us on all the different uh, platforms there. Um, you know, type in just type in We Talk Impact and the Total Nonstop Impact podcast comes right up. And um, you can find this podcast anywhere podcasts are found Apple, iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, iHeartRadio, TuneIn Radio, Spotify, and YouTube. YouTube is featured at Total Nonstop Impact or and I should say and or the Impact Lounge, which is the which is the number one place for impact wrestling news and discussion. Take a look. Got a bunch of cool new stuff up there. Killer Cross interview along with a new Ethan Page one that's going to go up soon. So a lot going on, guys. Uh, we keep busy over here at uh, Tall Nonstop Impact. So, yeah, connect with us. Let us know how we're doing. Please, one more thing I want to remind everybody, please rate the show. If you're, you have iTunes, do it right now. It takes two seconds. I'll wait. And there you go. See? There, that's all it took. <laughs> all you do is right there. That that little gap right there, all you do is go to iTunes, look up Total Nonstop Impact, hit five stars, let us know how we're doing, please. Uh, the more ratings we get, the more people find us. So please, guys, if you want, if you like us, what we're doing here, rate us, let us know. So I appreciate everybody listening this week. j thanks so much for joining, man. It was a total blast. You got a lot of great insight. I'd absolutely love to do this again, for sure, if you're up for it. Oh, absolutely! Yeah, I've I've been I've been wanting to uh, connect with you guys for a while now. I I like your show, um, I I like what you do with it. You know, so many people do the same thing, but how you guys construct your show and the little things you you put in there, um, it re- really makes it entertaining. You know, I I Thank and you. I I appreciate that for someone who, I mean, you know, I do a lot of YouTube stuff, and you guys are more you know, audio. So it's nice to have those little things to like, you know, bring you in, you know, uniquely, you know? Absolutely. No, I'm, I'm glad. I appreciate that, man. We, uh, we try, we try to keep it, uh, keep it cool and keep it interactive and, and overall fun, you know, and that's, that's the key here. So, Oh yeah. Uh, thanks for coming. I know. I definitely want to have you back for sure. I or If you want me to be on any of your shows, whatever you call me, just, just call upon me, man. I'll be there. Sounds like no, there's, there's, there's plenty of stuff coming up in the world of impact wrestling. We'll definitely bring you, bring you in for something. Absolutely. How about this? I, if you, if you want any insight on Windsor after they start airing, let me know. 
about I can throw in some insight on that, even even a short little bit as the shows air or something. So we can do that if you're up for it. Yeah, yeah. Leading up to um, what is it? Rebellion. Rebellion. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So any any time after WrestleMania weekend, when when uh, the 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 dust dies down from all that craziness. Let's do it. That sounds like that sounds like a plan to me. There you go. Cool, brother. Well, guys, thank you again very much. Again, please don't forget to check us out. We talk impacts. Type that in the search bar. We come right up. Connect with us. Let us know how you like this episode. And uh, we will be back. I don't know if Kyle's going to be back at this point, J-Bone. The guy is, is very, very hit or miss <laughs> when it comes to these schedules. He at least arranged you to be in his place today, though, which I appreciated. I said, all right, well, if you're going to be a fucking bonehead and not show up to the show, that's one thing. But I guess him to working all the details with you worked out pretty good so oh see i didn't know who i knew it was you know you you two were on the show i didn't know who i was i assumed it was you so it wasn't you what was it from the uh twitter or where did he contact you it was uh it was the um total nonstop impact twitter yeah so that was kyle he he does more on on that i i do it as well um usually when episodes are released but yeah, if you get a message from that, it's most likely going to be Kyle. <laughs> oh, okay. So he played matchmaker, and he got us together today. And then he sent me a text around, uh, like, 9 o'clock, and he's like, he's like, uh, send Jay Bone a text message. I'm like, for what? And, <laughs> he's like, and he's like, and he's like, for the show tonight. I go, I thought you arranged everything. I, I thought he was going to be on, too. I thought it was a three-man thing today. And he's like, no, I'm not going to be able to make it then. You guys got to figure it all out. I said, oh, shit. Okay. <laughs> that's what I messaged you. <laughs> and that's so funny because then, I, yeah, I, I got your message through through your Twitter. And I was right. like, oh, okay, there's there's a disconnect here, but I'm not going to overthink it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's awesome, man. Guys, thank you very much for joining us. Again, leave your feedback. We appreciate every single one of you for listening. Thank you, guys. And we will talk to you next week. Mr. Kyle.